All right, so uh, for this particular uh, tutorial, I'm using two different boards. Uh, we have the Colossus and LaForge um, stone cutting board here. And over here, we have the string board made by Nycris. And you can find uh, both of these boards over at Lady Kathleen's British Museum. Um, I know that this particular board is down at the bottom level, or at least it was at the time of this video. Um, and this board, I think, is up in the air in like a box squared area where all the Nycris's stuff is at. So, um, this particular board, um, the string board, this is these are the things we're going to be working with. These little bitty compressed voxels, really little thin little things. Um, and hopefully I can give you a brief tutorial on how to use this board in the process of also showing you how to use the other board as well. Now, to get started, we want to go ahead and start making our stones for the wall. And to do that, um, like I said, I'm going to try to show you two different ways of doing it. Uh, I went to this particular board and I pulled off all that is in this one section here. You can also use the ones that are on this side as well. Uh, but for this one, I think we're going to use just these. And I pulled them off to the side and I lined them out this way. So I took them out individually. And this is mainly because it is a little bit easier to grab the pieces in uh, laid out like this than it is to grab it straight off of the board. So, um, to begin the cutting process, I, I actually set up this, this wall and I made it into a big checkerboard and because I want you to be able to see how the voxels are reacting um, to the cutter and how they're forming all of these strange shapes and why you're getting gaps in certain places where you aren't getting gaps in other places and, and just how it kind of just kind of formulates the way it looks uh, based on the cuts. So um, this is something that's really kind of handy um, when you're doing, the, doing this cutting process because you can actually see what's happening, okay? And um, you'll be able to see how all those voxels are just kind of stretching and pulling and going into places that it normally wouldn't go, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right in and start doing some cutting here. I'm just going to grab some, some sections out of our little... Uh, little lines that we have over here. We're going to put them up against the wall like this. We're going to push it into the wall, press and hold F, and click our left mouse button. And you can kind of see what happened to all these different voxels and how they've started stretching uh, to form all these different shapes. And um, this is the whole entire purpose of doing the checkerboard. And um, it will help you when it comes down to trying to figure out exactly why something's doing something on the um, as you're doing your cutting okay now I'm just going to start you know just randomly grabbing little different sections out of this pasting them um, control C control V and hitting my tilde and, and tab keys to uh, do my rotations um, and we're going to just pop this in and do different deletions and you can see how that one right there created that huge gap. Uh, we want to try to stay away from really big gapping like that. So the more you kind of play with this, you might be able to find something that works a little bit better. Um, sometimes grabbing a shorter piece rather than a long piece will uh, serve you a little bit better uh, through the cutting process. But I'm going to try to expediate this uh, portion of this tutorial because this usually takes quite a bit of time to get um, exactly the shaping and stuff we're kind of like looking for. Um, but the idea is to basically cut out these odd little shapes like this and um, and try to leave as much you know um, as we possibly can and as for tightness up through this area here. Okay. Now, let's grab a little section out of this. And I'm just going to start just randomly placing some of these, these cuts all over the place and seeing what we can kind of come up with. And like I said, 
If it doesn't work in one spot, go to another and just try different locations to see what kind of shapes you can kind of pull out of it. Alright. Actually, I think I'll leave that one there. That looks good. We'll grab some long pieces, some short pieces. Um, we'll copy and paste it down. We'll do some rotations. Um, just to kind of get a different angle on certain areas. And see what we can kind of come up with here. It's probably kind of hard to see on the screen. But you can form these little stones just by doing uh, several different cuts. Um, you can try this and, and make just a whole bunch of different stones in this process like this. And uh, what you come out of it, or what you make out of it, is kind of up to you. And how much time you put into something is also up to you as well. Um, but making all these little odd shapes is kind of what we're trying to do here. We want to make something that, that really kind of just breaks it up as much as possible. Now, you'll also notice that the way these things, these lines are created, some sections are actually two voxels instead of a single voxel. Like this one here is a single voxel, where this section is actually two voxels that creates that section of line and that's because of the complexity of the shape and it uh, was very difficult to try to make um, that particular part um, and because it overlapped between one section of a voxel and another um, so we actually use two voxels to create those parts alright let's go ahead and see what we can get See if we can get at least a few more cuts out of this before we move on to the next section. Something like that. But you can actually make some pretty interesting uh, things out of this just by playing around and rotating and uh, doing deletions in different areas. Um, it's actually kind of cool. Oops, I hit the wrong key there. There we go. Kind of formulate um, some different shapes here. Uh, see what we can do about up here and we can at least get a section of wall that we can kind of work with there we go you can see this one right here it's really thin and I think what I'm going to end up doing with this one is selecting that one instead of using um, the line to do the uh, deletion I'm just going to use that particular voxel itself put it back in hold my F key and delete out just that one and uh, you can kind of see how this thing is kind of shaping up. It's doing some pretty neat uh, shaping um, all on its own. Okay, now, once we get to this point, um, and we've got like our basic shaping kind of going on, you know, say I've got something that's got a really huge hole in it, um, in some, some area of this, or maybe I want to come in and reshape some of these voxels here, to uh, close in some of those gaps. Maybe I want to kind of bring some of those pieces together just a little bit um, to get a different shape, okay? Now, to do that, using the, um, the string board, we're going to manipulate some of these voxels into another shape. And for that, I'm um, kind of going to show you probably on about two of these voxels or something like that, how you can go about doing it. 
and um, I think this is something that you're really gonna kind of enjoy just because it's pretty badass okay so if I take this one here I want to take this edge right here and I want to move it more upwards somewhere somewhere about in here and uh, something like at the top of this little space right here on the, of this little triangle I'll move it up in this direction now to do that I need to do the opposite instead of finding a voxel that is just like that or a string that is just like this I want to find the opposite I want to find one that's more in this direction so I want to go to the outside peak which would be right here um, and find one or something kind of close to that I want to find one that will fit up into that spot and I'm going to paste it in this location for this voxel so let me pull this one out let's we'll see what I can do about uh, reshaping that there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way down here take this copy of that pasted volume and hopefully I can show you guys this the way it kinda sits on the wall I might have to delete part of my flooring here to really give you a good perspective Now if I take that pasted volume and bring this down, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I want to take this edge and basically move it to this location here. So I'm going to use this particular uh, voxel to do that. Or uh, find one that is, um, actually, I think this is where I need to be, actually. I apologize, I had it in the wrong location. But we're going to take one that's more of the center. So we'd have to come more to the center of the voxel. So let's grab something like this. Now, if you notice, when you look at this board, you have a crosshair right here and right here. This is the the crosshairs of the center of the voxel. So if this is the voxel, this is your uh, cross section of the very dead center of it. Now to move from the center point down to one of the other areas, this is basically how it's laid out. So we're going to actually kind of go down into an angle like so to get those, um, to get the string for that position. Now say I wanted to manip manipulate a voxel that was right beside it. I want to take, instead of having a corner like this, I want to take that corner and pull it up into the voxel space of this other voxel. And that's basically kind of what we're doing. We're taking this string, and if we look at, I'll give you a demonstration. If I take my add tool, I go to fill option, and I take my little fill tool here and I put it down into this corner. You can see how that voxel has actually manipulated itself over. It's actually pulled that corner up into this area. You now take a good look at that shape. Now let's go down to here and let's do the same thing, except this time I'm going to put it in the same location and you'll be able to see how that one location change to this one down here changes that shape of that voxel. It doesn't look like the one we had before because it was like way up here. It has now pulled this one way over here and in this fashion this is how we're manipulating the voxels that we have on the stone. So just that manipulation between this point to this point, you can kind of see the slight variations all the way around. Now this works in conjunction with the voxels just above it and the one just above it and all the way around in a three by three. And the one you're actually working with is the one in the center. So uh, in, that, in that regards, you actually come up with, you know, a, a good nine different voxel types based on the position of that one single voxel in the center. 
All right, so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to manipulate that voxel that I uh, showed you um, that we want to manipulate here. So if I paste this down, move this over, and you see how I've pulled that corner of this voxel out in a different direction. So I can copy this one. Now let's go ahead and delete that one and replace the one that was there with this one. You can see how I can start closing up the gaps um, kind of slowly but surely um, in this fashion all the way around. Um, it's just a matter of taking one out and um, kind of manipulating it just a little bit. So for this one, let's do it one more time just so you it kind of clarifies things just a little bit more. We're working on the space on the other side of this one that we were manipulating here in the center. If you notice, all of these are gray and there's no dark gray between that. It's just all light grays, which is telling me that there was a light gray here. There was a dark gray here and a dark gray here, here, and here. But all of those have been deleted out using the lines that we uh, were using as our cutter. Now, I want to take this one, I take this edge of this voxel, I want to move it up and over into this space here. Now, to get a good idea of where that space is, I use my selection tool and move it up. Now, on this side, I don't want it too close to this one, so I do not want to grab the same string that I had up there. Instead, I want to go on the other side of the crosshairs, in other words, down in that bottom corner, other opposite bottom corner, somewhere over in here, just to bring it up a little bit. I don't want it exactly in the same location as that one. It just wouldn't look natural. Okay? So, let's grab this one, paste it down, move it out, like this, and this time, I'm going to go back up and you remember I grabbed, I think it was this one, or it was one of these up here. This time, I want to move somewhere in this region because I don't want it to be the same height. I want it to be lower and more off to the opposite side. So I want to come here in the center somewhere. I'll bring this down and over to that corner of where that voxel would have been in that three by three, like this, okay? So we have there and we have here. This time, this right here still doesn't look like it's quite lined up where I want it. I want it to be somewhere about in this location. So let's go down and over some more and see if I can get it more into that location. Now this one is about in line with this one that I was looking at before. I think I went down too far. That looks about where I want it, right there. So I'm going to take that string to do the manipulation for that voxel. Let's grab this one, pull this out, control C to copy. Let's go back over to our original and get this thing lined up right there. I'm going to do an F delete. Select, control X to cut it, bring that down into position, drop it in, and paste. And you see, I'm slowly but surely, you know, form, forming that edge up exactly how I want it to close it up. Now, you may have to do this all to each piece to get it exactly the way you want to. I would say don't. Uh, sometimes, you know, just having a few of them that are closed up pretty tight and having others that have like big gaps actually looks a little bit more natural. And that's probably the way I would probably end up going um, for the main part of this. Now, once you've actually created your stone pieces, um, from here, we want to get some variants. 
uh, for the actual wall itself. And I think I'm gonna just use like this section here uh, for the wall. So let's copy this. Let's paste it. And you can see I've got a big old chunk missing kind of over here, but uh, we might be able to fill that up with something else. Uh, let's grab this piece here. Might be able to do something with that. Something like that. That looks good. And we might be able to take our line tool here on this outside edge and double click just to kind of flatten it out just a little bit. Because I want it uh, to hit right up against the surface. This piece here doesn't come out quite enough. Let's just extrude that out just a bit. And let's see if this will actually pull this down a little bit more too. No guarantees on this. And let's use a fill here in this corner. See what kind of shape. Ooh, perfect. Look at that. So we actually just replaced or put back in one of the voxels that were have been taken out at some point in time. And you never know what kind of shape you might be able to actually bring back by doing that. So uh, definitely use your fill option and see if that works as well. I'm going to select this whole piece and I'm going to grab that light color. I'm going to paint it all the light color. I'm going to take my line tool, take it across this surface, double click across the whole surface. Um, that way it's all kind of equal. Like that and that. That's all good. Now let's select the whole thing. I'm going to copy this. <clears throat> We're going to double it. So make it too thick. Now, at this point, we have some nice thick, you know, kind of brickwork kind of going on. Um, now we can actually come in here and I'm going to select out a few of the bricks. Bring this down or the stones, sorry. And I'm going to just delete out certain parts of them. So we have some of them that kind of stick out, some of them that kind of push in. That way we got a little bit of a variance uh, between our different pieces of stonework. And this will give a, a nice little effect. Something like that. And if you take some time, you can actually come in here and probably give some, some curvature to some of them. Um, pull out individual stones and do like a single, um, just a smooth job on one side of it. And uh, to give you an example, let's uh, take, say, this one. We want to see how this works. I'm just going to kind of multiply this a few times. That way the back side kind of retains its shape. I'm just going to grab the front side here, like so. Take our smooth tool, hold F to go into function smooth, which is uh, controlled smooth, and I'm going to tap it just once. And this would kind of give us a some shaping that we didn't have before. It, it has like an almost smooth type look to it. Now we can just kind of copy this whole section and put it back in. So copy this, paste, and pop it right back in. And you see how the uh, stones around it kind of reacted, and that's because I'm pasting, I need to paste without air and that will give us you know some rocks that have like a smooth texture to it there now for the rest of it it's just a matter of putting a actual backing on this thing so we're gonna drop this back by one go to my add tool I'm gonna select this darker color or for our backing use the fill option and fill now you can kind of see how the stone works kind of coming together. Now let's grab the top, pull this up, 
and we're going to put a topping on this so add tool let's try the fill first to see how the voxels kind of react and it looks like it pulls it down way too much so let's do it without fill this time and that looks a little bit better it's a little different and I've got some voxeling in here that does not need to be there so let's select those two there it is let's push that back in hold F and delete to remove them it's looking a lot better there All right, line tool I clean this edging up just a little bit and you can see the how it's kind of starting to formulate a little bit better here and let's go ahead and fill that in with regular voxels I'm actually using the wrong color but it's all good <clears throat> so now I'm gonna give this in a protruding tight little bottom section here and then we're gonna kind of work with some of the other stone cutters to to make a little bottom piece to this so we have something that looks like that now the uh, how you do the rest of it is kind of up to you but I'm gonna kind of show you how to use some of the other cutters and that will pretty much end up this tutorial so I'm going to come over here and you can see there's all kinds of different cutters, different shapes and um, different ways they look and you can do a lot of variants uh, with this board. It does quite a bit of stuff. You can even do cuts on angles and depending on the angle that you're uh, working with, these work really good for that. You have these that actually cut off to one side of the voxel. You have these over here for the most part all of these here cut in the center of the voxel so it takes the voxels on either side and pulls them inwards and then you have these over here that actually cut in uh, various different locations either straight in the center or all the way out to the side on um, into the space of another voxel you have corner cutters side cutters and these are uh, pins and the pins basically pulls it all together and so for these right here I'm just going to go over this section right here and kind of show you how that actually works and um, these actually are kind of neat I like working with these so uh, for this I think I'm going to work with let's see let me find one I like here let's go with this one right here or maybe this one Let's go with this one right here. I'm going to copy these three pieces of the cutter. So copy those. I'm going to bring these back over here, and this is what we're going to use for the last little part of this. So boom. Now, it doesn't look like much, but these things are actually pretty neat. The white is the cutter, the gray is the handle. So let's get in here and start our cutting hold F and delete mouse wheel down delete and just kinda of repeat this um, as we're kinda of going along and you can actually put in some pretty cool uh, stone work we're now gonna rotate this so that the cutter is on the bottom here I'm gonna bring this out here that actually uh, is going to fit really tight I might end up messing up my my bricks there you might have to go all the way back with it there we go you can kind of see how the, the cutting starting to kind of fit together there Another thing we could probably do is copy those out and then just repaste afterwards. We'll grab the one that's in the rear and just bring it back to the front. That would probably be our 
best bet on this one. So copy that one. Paste. The idea is at least get the groove in it. And as long as we get some kind of a groove in there, we should be okay. We're going to grab this corner cutter. And now we're going to drop this down on that corner, doing the same thing. And that will cut out the corner. That way the top is equal with the bottom. And the ones that have the, the sharp point on them, uh, you can really tell the difference uh, when it comes down to these little corner cutters, um, how they actually respond. Now, so I've got like three different blocks here. I want to break up one of them to where it looks like it's actually two of them stacked on top of uh, each other. So I'm going to come over here and delete a cross piece here. And if you notice how it pulls it out, hopefully you can kind of see that. It actually pulls it down into like these angles. Say you don't want the angle. Well, that's where the pin comes into play. We grab this pin, copy, put it in that sectional hole there and do the same thing. You use your delete and it will pull these pieces together like so. So you get something that looks like that. It's a pretty neat look so it looks like instead of just three pieces of block it's actually four now. Now like I said each one of these cutters are different. I just grab one random up there um, you get different looks for different ones and how you kind of approach it is up to you. Um, you can do all kinds of different stuff with this. I mean you can come in here with your smooth tool. You can you know give it some some jankiness if you wish um, just to kind of break it up and make it look like it's got a little bit of damage to it or um, whatever you kind of formulate. I'd love to see what you uh, come up with this. But that is a kind of a rush job tutorial on how to do some of this brick, brick work. Um, definitely take it, run with it. I'd love to see what you do with it. And um, if this has been helpful in any way, definitely hit the like button. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you on the next tutorial. Boom.